you've heard uh, three interesting and very different presentations, and now it's your turn. So we'll open the floor to questions. We'll take a series of questions and then uh, uh, ask the presenters to respond. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, my name is Jahangiram Chaudhuri. I'm, if I'm from Bangladesh. I teach at the University of Dhaka. My question to the last presenter is that, okay, uh, regarding the, you, have, you have shown the, the potential of uh, producing energy from renewable sources, okay. But the point is that have you done any sort of like cost benefit analysis, how much cost it will incur in terms of the, uh, compared to the benefits that we'll give. And, and compared to the, uh, the conventional energy sources that you have, is it going to be financially beneficial uh, to the countries? If we uh, if they go for renewable energies, this is the this is my question. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Hey, Al Kimchi from the Hebrew University. I have a question for the first uh, presenter. Um, it's really just an anecdote, but you started your presentation by saying that. Uh, uh, 20 20, uh, a genie of uh, 0.2 for Egypt is perhaps too low uh, compared to Switzerland and some other countries. I don't know if it's really relevant because Egypt could be in pretty bad shape even if everybody is equally poor. So maybe that's not a good enough reason for the Arab Spring to start in Egypt or not. But One back, back here. <coughs> Hi, uh, Rabah Harski, IMF. Um, so on the first uh, presenter, so I saw you, uh, you, had, you were referring to a paper on uh, food prices and conflict. There's a lot of literature on that. Uh, so I can point you to some, some of the paper that I know of. One of the paper is uh, one of mine with uh, uh, Marcus Bruckner, where we document systematically for a very large sample of country the role that food prices uh, uh, the role it played in, uh, 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 you know, causing riots and uh, and, and conflict uh, across the world over a lot of periods. Then on, uh, so I I felt uh, that your paper was trying to do too much uh, because you, I mean, you subsequently talked about climate change, uh, food prices. You talked about inequality. So I felt uh, one of the big um, big uh, uh, component on the agricultural sector in the world is this uh, phenomena called the global land rush. No. So uh, I'm sure you heard about this uh, large investor acquiring very large chunk of land. And then I think the, the, uh, the most important aspect here is the transformation of the potential transformation of the agricultural sector in the sense that, you know, there, there's a, a trend of potentially, uh, uh, you know, modernizing this agriculture that, is, that has been uh, for too long, you know, too traditional, not modern, so the yield gain may come from modernization and understand that climate change may, uh, you know, revert that or at least reduce that. But, you know, you, you can't talk about uh, reduction in the yield without talking about the biggest development, which I, I feel are those uh, uh, large acquisition of land, perhaps driven by climate change uh, threat. But, you know, it would be, uh, I think, it, it would be a bit naive to to uh, omit this uh, uh, this issue, and then I feel your uh, your uh, uh, your tools, the uh, 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 general equilibrium uh, tool you're using, are, are, are extremely uh, important, because one of the results we find in our paper is the importance of the uh, uh, impact of food prices on inequality. But then what you have, I mean, in your model is very useful because you could specifically look at the welfare of the, the farmer, that, uh, the, the urban household. And, and I think one of the key aspects there is that, you know, we don't really care if the country is food importer, net importer or exporter. What we care about is the tension that would result from the increase in food prices. So if your paper or if your analysis uh, can shed light on you know the re, uh, you know the evolution or the respective evolution of welfare of those different categories and shed light on why is there a uh, potential conflict or more tension in some other country be beyond going uh, 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 beyond looking at inequality the gini coefficient but really looking at what's going on and as you know i mean uh, uh, you know the gap between urban poor 
and, uh, uh, and rural poor if, in a way has widened but in, in, in the favor of the rural poor because they have homegrown production, they are shielded from international food prices and all that could be uh, analyzed, analyzed in a much uh, greater depth thanks to your model. So I'm happy to, to talk uh, net food exporter position. But I think <coughs> that brings about a lot of problem for these countries because, with an for example, Turkey is an increasing population and in order to pay maintain its uh, food exporting position, Turkey will need to invest a lot in the uh, agriculture. And the first point is that, is it that easy to maintain that uh, food exporting position under climate change? What do you think? Secondly, okay, is uh, selling food to the rest of the world or being a net exporter of food uh, really winning? Because you can sell food to the rest of the world by increasing the domestic prices, right? You can simply sell food to the outside, but meanwhile your consumers uh, can be losing significantly by paying higher prices to the uh, domestic products. And so uh, I'm not very sure about this winning uh, and losing thing. What do you think about that? Thank you. Malcolm, right here. Thanks very much. Uh, I've got a question for Clemens and a question for Georgetta. The question for Clemens was your you, you concluded by saying that actually it could be the rural farmers who come out best. Uh, over other people, but we know from climate change that it's going to have uh, there's going to be great variability, and you're only going to be you may be better off in the long run if things are things average out, but you have to survive those few shocks. Does your model is your model able to take those shocks into account? Because it could very well be that uh, many farmers are driven off the land. Uh, in, in those, those very bad periods. My question for Jodetta really picks up on the first question from the gentleman from Bangladesh, which was, if you did do economic analysis, did you factor in the impact of climate change on these countries' ability to maintain coal power plants and the need for cooling, given what you were saying about water stress? One back here. Thank you. I have uh, one question to uh, the second presentation about uh, the fact that there's, it seems that they're lacking a kind of uh, uh, coordination between the different actors. And my question is about at what level the discussion should be uh, to make that consensus about urbanization and to uh, address the climate change uh, issue and its impact of climate change. Because it seems that there is a problem of communication, but also in addition to communication there is a problem of coordination there is not really enough coordination between the different level and with different actors uh, to, so to uh, succeed in that process we need a kind of consensus between all the stakeholders uh, how we can make that in in the in the in the MENA region context so a uh, uh, question for uh, the, the the last presentation is about uh, what about the local demand on uh, renewable energy do you have an idea if there is, because in the uh, innovation process, demand is very important. Is there a local market really for renewable energy in MENA region? Which is about European demand. That means it's a, a demand from the European country that they want really to develop uh, renewable energy for their own purposes. But when we it comes to the local market, it seems that the demand is lacking. So if it is so, that means whatever we do in terms of institutions or, in or implementing uh, innovation, this process will not be succeed because it's not really locally driven. So do you have an idea about if there is any kind of demand at the local market? Thank you. Any more questions? We've got a pretty full plate here. Um, I'm going to add a couple of quick ones. Uh, Georgetta, you mentioned a lot about the potential for Morocco exporting uh, to Europe. Uh, I do work on energy in Morocco, and I know that's true. They talk a lot about it. Uh, um, but I'd like your opinion on how realistic it is, at, at least for the near term. Um, and Islam, I'd like uh, if you would just please comment on, uh, do you think passive solar is... Uh, used or adapted enough as much as it should be in Egypt. It should. It seems there should be a lot of potential for it, um, but my experience in Egypt suggests maybe not, but I'd like your view on, on that. Uh, Clemens, you want to start? Sure. You see the, the advantage of putting a lot into a presentation, you get a lot of interesting questions, so <laughs> I'm, I'm happy for that. Thank you. 
Um, so let me take them like step by step. Uh, the first one, um, inequality, does it really matter if all the people are poor? Um, I mean, we are talking about the Middle East, and I don't think this is a theoretical construct. If, if we go at any of those countries, and especially Egypt, and mm. you may you may or may not um, jump in at this point, but there is huge inequality that you see on the ground um, and, and with the eyes. And so it, it's not like all people are poor, but some people are extremely rich and some people are poor. So there is definitely inequality there that is not reflected in the data. There is also other ways to, to figure out. So for example, uh, my colleagues from UNDP, they looked at household surveys and from which the Gini coefficients are actually calculated. And they looked at, okay, how much do those household surveys actually capture the, 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 the broad population? And they did that by, you know, adding up private consumption from the household surveys in different countries and compare it to national accounts, private uh, consumption. Now, you wouldn't expect that they match perfectly, but you would expect if the samples and so on is done properly that they are somewhere close. Now, if you look, and that's true for most of the countries, but taking Egypt again specifically, they found that only 50% of the uh, private consumption um, that is reported in national accounts is found in the household survey. So there's some some more indication of uh, of the fact that there's something wrong with the calculation simply rather than um, uh, misrepresenting the the story on the on the ground. Um, then um, FDI surely plays a big role. I understand Arab countries are rather investors. Um, and not recipients, especially, you know, the Gulf countries, also Egypt, investing in Sudan and so on. And I'm not quite sure if I if I got your point. On the one hand side, you said that there was a lot of stuff in the presentation. On the other hand side, you're saying FDI is missing. Yes, that could also be added. But then we'd end up with even more comprehensive. Um, Just in a stylus fact, when you discuss the uh, development, the current development, this is one of the uh, biggest developments food sector, which may impact uh, the long run. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that, yes. Um, then on population growth and whether or not Turkey can maintain a net food exporting position, I'm sure you will figure that out with your, with your new project. <laughs> um, it's hard to say, but what I would like to say is if we say like some farmers may lose, and that also ties into the next question, then obviously we are not talking about the consumer side of things. And I haven't reported those results, but the nice thing about CGE models, they also take the consumer side into account. And local or global effects, no matter what, the consumer is likely to lose because, well, the net income or uh, the, will will go down because of the the real income will go down because of the higher prices that have to be paid by by the food and it's true that um, the model as it stands does not capture the volatility uh, that may drive out farmers out of the market and so that's certainly something to acknowledge um, here yes thank you Islam? So can I just yes. one? Well, let, let's go let the others, if we have time at the end, yes, but let's, let's let the others, please. Okay. For the first question regarding to uh, how can we manage, we have for landscape, uh, uh, we have horizontally between cities, each other. This is between policies or governors. This policy is what? And vertically, we have this is policy, strategy, and action. Therefore, uh, my imagination that we can manage with this uh, chapter, which I call it landscape architecture chapter, this can manage the policies between in horizontal level and increase the awareness by uh, lectures, by this uh, pilot project, increase the uh, awareness for people. How can they uh, help uh, decision makers to implement the, this policy? Because in action plan, if uh, people within uh, the local of action plan are not 
convinced or are not aware, away, uh, aware sorry, by uh, the importance of the issue, they will not cooperate and no success will be happened. Therefore, uh, my imagination that if we can uh, deliver the message to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the streets or the people in the streets to convince them about the importance, how can we deal with this landscape uh, architecture issues, how can we uh, save our uh, energy, how can we save our planet in general, uh, this is, could be a very benefit and uh, helpful to uh, make the policy a success between each country and each other. Especially when uh, we're talking about this is uh, what we call it in the spring now, everybody is doing what he would like to do without following any uh, sort of uh, discipline or uh, uh, policy or integration with each other. Therefore, the problem now is increasing in a dramatic way. For my uh, my vision that if we can create these chapters like uh, urban observatory, this is here indicating uh, this there to cooperate with each other. This problem happened there, so can how can we study uh, the analysis and the, the feedback? This is uh, for my uh, uh, my thought about uh, this issue uh, with my experience for this field. Um, about uh, <coughs> passive solar, I hardly 100 percent. Uh, yeah, you are absolutely right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, I would like to uh, continue what my colleague said about the census in, uh, in Egypt. Really, there is uh, some sort of missing, misleading in the information which we have. Really, there is diversity without no equity, and you can find some people extra rich, especially in this gated community. And suddenly, you can find very poor. There is no uh, clear. Uh, Senses or no, not clear information regarding to this part. Therefore, we have uh, always find this misleading in information. Sure, Egypt is not like Switzerland, and uh, it's hundred <laughs> percent. But the problem that uh, my colleague presented, I believe, which I understand, really there is missing of uh, uh, observing and detecting the data, especially about the application, uh, without applying for uh, such issues. Thank you, Georgia. Thank you. Okay, so with respect to the first uh, question on the cost-benefit analysis, um, yeah, that's, it's, a, it's a very good uh, point that you make. Um, we have not, in this study, we have not looked uh, at, uh, we have not performed the cost-benefit analysis uh, of uh, renewable energy in the region, but there are some studies uh, that uh, are looking at uh, these issues not sufficiently uh, yet, but it's, it's picking up something that uh, um, is clear from existing uh, studies is that um, investment uh, maintaining the current energy mix in the region is not very sustainable uh, in the long term because of volatility in fuel prices and the <coughs> increase in energy demand relying on fossil fuel would be costlier than shifting to renewable energy despite the high investment cost that is uh, necessary to uh, start such a development process and Within renewable energy, I think it's important to differentiate between different technologies because if we look at uh, wind energy and solar photovoltaics, these technologies are already uh, at parity or very close to uh, parity with the uh, uh, conventional uh, electricity uh, generation. So it would um, it, it's a feasible it becomes a feasible more feasible investment. Uh, um, in terms of uh, job uh, creation benefits, I think the question mark there is uh, higher. To, to what extent these technologies are likely to contribute to uh, social development and reduce the uh, unemployment uh, problem that the region is confronting with, and uh, certainly much more research needs to be uh, invested in, on, in that topic to, to really measure, quantify the um, economic and social impact from in, in that respect. And um, also with uh, Malcolm's uh, point on uh, water scarcity, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, so again, we have not looked at this specific uh, aspect in our study, but uh, uh, there, is, there are a couple of studies that are looking uh, uh, at these issues. One in particular is the DLR uh, study that you, uh, looks at uh, the deployment of CSP uh, technologies in the region and the impact on water. And uh, the conclusion or some of the points that they are making is that we need to look at uh, different types of 
uh, CSP technologies that are less uh, water intensive, that use dry cooling or other types uh, of uh, uh, cooling technologies that are not so uh, water intensive, um, which in principle creates opportunities for the region to really invest uh, into innovation and technology adaptation of existing technologies to the region. Um, yeah, so that's... And uh, also with respect, so with the, uh, re respect to the question in the back uh, related to whether there is a really a local demand to uh, renewable energy. So as I mentioned in the presentation, demand for energy is quite high and is likely to increase uh, in, in the future. So renewable energy can play, you could say from that respect that yes, there is a local demand for uh, renewable energy, um, but the, presently the current institutional framework is not um, strong enough to stimulate uh, local deployment uh, to the uh, potential that uh, exists. So, for instance, in uh, Morocco, there is a very good uh, law that enables uh, the deployment of or the connection of high voltage uh, renewable energy plants for wind and solar to the grid, but it restricts uh, the connection of low and medium voltage uh, um, <coughs> solar uh, projects mm -hmm. to the grid. So that uh, ulti um, ultimately blocks a certain uh, market creation in, in the country. So these uh, aspects need to be, uh, or these barriers need to be removed uh, to enable a larger uh, demand uh, or <coughs> national demand. Yeah, local demand. Um, okay, so with respect to exports, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a question that's on everybody's mind when we talk about uh, uh, EU human uh, energy integration and how likely uh, this uh, great vision is to actually uh, trickle down to uh, or result in implementation. And I think uh, and theoretically, obviously, there is a lot of, it's very likely that uh, such a project could uh, take place. but. There are a lot of political and institutional yeah. barriers that uh, might uh, hinder uh, 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 energy exports in the short, uh, in the short, maybe also medium term. And these uh, political and institutional barriers do not necessarily in, uh, come from the southern Mediterranean countries, uh, from Morocco, Egypt, Tunisia, that where you could say yes, uh, the ben we, there are clear benefits. We can benefit from. Uh, foreign exchange uh, 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 as a result of uh, imp exports, but uh, comes from the northern Mediterranean uh, countries where it's very difficult to reach an agreement among the right. countries of who buys the electricity at what price, right. uh, who's feeding tariff, Germany's feeding tariff, or Spain feeding tariffs, or maybe we need to come up with a new uh, feed-in tariff and these political negotiations are uh, perhaps much more challenging than the technical right. uh, solutions. So that was the impression mm -hmm. that I had. Just one footnote on the, your question about uh, the economics. Uh, we're doing work now with the Moroccan uh, Ministry of Energy and the Haute Commissariat au Plan to basically, we're using a CGE energy model for Morocco to estimate what the impacts of different levels of penetration of solar and wind energy are on the Moroccan economy. It's not a micro level benefit cost, but it's an economy wide benefit cost. And so that should be completed by mid year next year um, and, and be available to the, the two ministries in Morocco. So it's, they're not ignoring the economics of it. Thank you all for coming. Uh, it's been a lively and interesting session. Uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, thanks to our presenters.